ask God to be with us. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have walked with Asbury Low these many years of, of our existence. Now walk with us again, Lord, as we look for insights and we look for updates and we look for evidence of your presence among us. Be with us here and may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord, for you are our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. Amen. I'm going to start um, with what I usually start with, and that's the mission, because we don't ever want to lose sight of our mission. Our mission, let's read it together, shall we? The mission of the United Methodist Church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. That's our mission. Everything we do should line up somehow, make some kind of contribution to this mission. Now, the vision for our context that's the expression of the mission, and this is the current vision that we're using, um, and we've had it for about three or four years now. Um, let's read that together. A spirit-led community with every member sharing gifts in ministry to grow closer to God and each other, to translate faith into action, and to equip disciples to do both. Remember this, because we're going to come back to it um, later on in our time together. I'm also going to remind you of something that I have said every year in our State of the Church conversations. And I'm going to remind you again, and at some point in time, I'll be able to look at you and say, I told you so. But we're not quite there yet. Engaging more adults in ministry supports the general mission of the church, which is to make disciples. That's our charge, and engaging adults does that. So here's where we're going to go today for five categories. We're going to talk, spend a great deal of time of uh, moving from surviving to thriving and what it means to grow the kingdom. Pat Thornton suggested that um, I introduce to you the life cycle of a church, and so we're going to take a look at that and how that meshes with where we are in our life cycle here at Asbury. Then the next four will be very brief. I will be talking about our programming ministries and small groups. We're going to look at systems and structures, and we're going to look at some basic feedback by the numbers. Some people are used to looking at uh, feedback by numbers, and so this will help clarify a little bit more where we are and where we need to go. And then a little bit of feedback from Reverend Dr. Jay Johnson. Um, Jay Johnson came uh, to consult with a group of leaders here to do a ministry assessment, and he had some feedback, and I'll share with you some of that feedback. So uh, buckle your seatbelts because we are going to be moving. Fri thriving, surviving to thriving. I showed you this one last year. I still love it. This is a wall of a school, and it says the most dangerous place, or dangerous phrase in the language, sorry, I need my glasses, um, is we've always done it this way. That's very dangerous. Um, it's a reminder that we as a church are a living body and we will always be in change. And not only are we changing, but the world around us is changing. And if we try to maintain, we're going to lose ground. So with that, we're going to look at this past year in terms of a life cycle. Now, there are lots of different ways to assess where we are. This is a tool called the life cycle of a church, and it's going to frame where we're going today. It's a normal thing for churches, um, and it has some underlying principles, and it has different stages of life, just like we do. Now, the information comes from some doctoral work, doctoral work by Reverend Dr. George Bullard, and the slides look a little different because they are coming from the Episcopalian Church, who put this up on, on uh, the web and said, please download and use. So we thank the Episcopalian Church for their work. It saved me a ton of time. It didn't, didn't show up. Well, okay, so didn't always work. Um, the life cycle, the congregational life, starts with birth. You can see that birth beginning place. It looks like a bell curve. You see growth. Then there's a time of stability and a time of decline until death. This is the life cycle of human beings as well, is it not? And we are living bodies, and so we're going to look at the life cycle of a church. Unless some of these stages are uh, in intentionally interrupted, they're, they're natural. They happen automatically. 
and they're normal. And so what I'm going to help us do today is to identify where we are so that we can know which way we need to go to bring new life and some revitalization to this congregation. And of course, that's not our total job. Our job is to work in partnership with the congregation and and Jesus, because he's got the power, right? The Holy Spirit is a part of our congregational life um, that facilitates things. So, oh, come on. Oh, it's still loading. Here it goes. Nice, except I need the next one. Oh, it's a stepped. There we go. Here we go. Didn't do this on my computer, so... Surprise. There are four organizing principles when we talk about the life cycle of the church. Very first one up there you see is vision. Now vision is the current understanding of God's direction for a congregation. It's cast by the leadership and it's owned by everyone in the congregation. It reflects the core values of the congregation. And a healthy vision is outwardly focused because in the church we seek to bring those to the kingdom that are not currently in the kingdom, unchurched, dechurched. So we're not looking inside the walls, it's an outward focus. And a vision is the fuel or the energy that drives the congregation into the future with hope and a sense of potency, okay? Now relationships, spiritual and our spiritual and relational processes, we talked a little bit about that today. Um, these are processes by which persons are brought to faith or brought to a deeper faith. So it, be, it works for people who are just beginning their spiritual journey and it works for those of us who've been in that spiritual journey for a while. It's how the congregation actually attracts new people into the Christian journey and it helps the current congregation deepen and mature in their faith and in their faith journey to mature that faith. Uh, nurture those relationships within the church community as well. And evidence of effective relationship experience is that ever, deeping, spir ever deepening spirituality, it's a widespread ownership of congregational activities and it's the development of new leadership. All of those happen when your relational processes are healthy and dominant. The third one is programs, and that's really representing programs, ministries, and activities that embody the vision of the church and reflect the gifts and vocations of the congregation and its members. So effective programs meet real, identified, spiritual, social, and emotional needs of the people in the neighborhood as well as within the church community. Evidence of effective program is that the church is known for the excellence of its programs, ministries, and activities. The last one is management, and this is not a bad word. This is the administrative ministries in the church, and they provide systems and structure that work together, that work integratively to undergird the, undergird the fulfillment of the vision and the implementations of the relational processes and the programs and we commonly call that administration. That would be trustees, that would be finance, that would be stewardship, all of those important pieces that undergird. undergird. Now, as you're looking at the principle, organizing principles, all four of these principles can be found in each of the 10 life stages of a church, but they're in different dominance. So I think we're gonna have to do this. Yes, we are, see I'm a quick learner. It went away. Stop that. There, there we go. Thank you. Notice on the left side of the curve, that's growing. What's the commonality on that left side of the curve? If a capital letter, it means it's dominant. If it's a little letter, it means it's not dominant. What is the common factor on the left of the curve? Vision. Did you notice in all of those stages of growth, vision is one of the dominant principles. It is the only dominant principle, right? That, that is common. Um, on the right side of the curve, that's a declining curve. What's not dominant consistently? Vision. What is dominant consistently? 
management, okay? Management becomes the dominant principle on that declining side of the curve. And without healthy vision, management becomes survival. Do you hear the difference? It dictates decision making. It limits available resources because that's all we have. And it establishes firmer boundaries. And we're not going to go there. Okay? It's a protective. So watch for these as we take a look at the different life cycles. Now, here's a question for you. I told you we'd come back to our current vision statement. Is that an inward or outward vision? So it it is expressing what we do in light of people who are not here yet. No. <laughs> I invite you to rethink that. It talks about a community with every member sharing gifts in ministry to grow closer to God and each other to translate faith into action and equip disciples to do both. Is that an inward or an outward focus? It's inward. That's not a bad thing. This is not a criticism, it's feedback. All right? It's feedback. It doesn't mean it's wrong. What it means is we are not going to grow until it's outward. Does that make sense? Okay? Now, on which side of the life cycle would you expect to find Asbury at this time? If that's an inward focused vision. On the declining side. Is that, is that right? Is that where you'd expect to find us? By the way, that's where most mainline churches are. So we're not alone in our misery. Oh, does somebody know how to turn that off? I love, I love the praise band, but... Perfect. Thank you, Joe. So take a, take, remember those remaining three principles? Relational processes, program, and management. If we're on the declining side of the curve, we know that management is dominant, right? What else, is, what else do you see on the declining side? You see program and relationship, growing closer to God and each other, right? So both of those pieces are in there and actually somewhat dominant depending on how we live those out. Programs, ministries, and activities embody the vision of the church, which is inward, and reflect the gifts and vocations of the congregation. We have a congregation full of awesome people. I just want you to know that. Um, we're just in return right now. Um, and so spiritual and relational processes, programs and ministries, those are areas we need to be working on. But most particularly, we need to work on vision. Now this vision statement has served us well for the last few years. But really, a vision statement's only good three to five years. And every three to five years at most, we need to be revisioning. And I think probably right now, is a good time to do that. Let's take a look at vision. That's the key piece for growth. It's the fuel or energy that drives the congregation forward throughout the growth side of the cycle. It's the current understanding of God's spiritual strategic direction. Whose direction? God's. For a congregation that is cast by the leadership, which is not me by myself. We have a whole team. And owned by the membership, all right? So let's see if we can get this one put together. There's one more, there we go. Perfect. This is um, based on Dr. Bullard's study. This is the approximate congregation.